Oh, hi everybody. How are we all doing today? I hope you're having a fantastic December. I was out there earlier and we got that freezing rain coming down and life is just miserable. It's fantastic. Anyway, for today's video, I decided that I was going to assess the Straw Hats funds. Um, you know, exactly how much money do the Straw Hats really have to work with? So I have my Luffy bank right here and I can hear some stuff rattling around. So, so let's see what the Straw Hats have to work with here. Let's see here. Okay. Um, they have, let's see, that's a quarter. That's 50 cents. Uh, it's a great thing the Straw Hats utilize uh, United States uh, dollars and cents. That That's handy. Uh, it's 57. Uh, it's 62 cents. And a thumbtack. <laughs> it actually is 62 cents. Wait, did I put that money in there because of the 62 cents joke from SpongeBob? Man. There is some- everything in my life always circles back to a Spongebob reference at some point. And a thumbtack. Okay. So anyway, um, yeah, this was something that came about a couple of weeks ago. I did a live stream, and at the beginning of the stream, we talked about what the Straw Hats would get each other for Christmas. You know, like, which Straw Hats would do really well at getting presents for the others, and which ones wouldn't. So I might actually make that a fully realized video. Maybe I'll release it on Christmas Day? I don't know. Um, but it also made me think that, like, wait a minute, how much money do the Straw Hats have? Because, you know, it's like... They're pirates. Like, let's not forget that. At the end of the day, they are pirates, right? Now, they're not the murdering, pillaging, burn your town down and laughing maniacally kind of pirate. Um, that's more of, like, Blackbeard and, like, Eustace Kid and everything like that. But, you know, they're still pirates, and so, therefore, they do steal from people. Like, the Straw Hats... Okay, number one, the Straw Hats have definitely murdered people. All right, if we're just gonna go down the list of the number of Straw Hats that have definitely killed other people. Luffy absolutely has, alright? Like, even if you want to say, well, wait a minute, Luffy doesn't, you know, he, he didn't kill uh, Anaru or Rob Lucci or, or Magellan or, or anybody. He didn't kill Doflamingo. Luffy doesn't murder. Yeah, say that to all of the impel down guards that he was just chucking off of a scaffolding over a boiling pot of magma and blood. I'm sure they're fine. You know, Luffy has definitely murdered, okay? Zoro, absolutely. I love how they just cut the pretenses with that in the, um, in, in the live action. They just show Zoro straight up, like, you know, cutting somebody in half in the first episode of the live action. Uh, Nami probably has not murdered anybody. Usopp, uh, I don't think he has, but it might be one of those things, like, offhand. Maybe he, he shot a gunpowder star into a random marine that might have not have made it. Who knows? Um, Sanji, I don't think has murdered anybody, but, you know, maybe... Maybe he has, I don't know. Chopper definitely hasn't. Robin, absolutely. Robin was an assassin for years. Uh, Frankie was in charge of, like, the underworld at Water 7. I feel like there was a few moments where they took some loans out from the fa Frankie family and they didn't pay back and Frankie had to, like, you know, bust some heads. So I, I feel like Frankie's definitely murdered. Um, you know, Brooke... I don't know, man. He's lived a long life. There's a lot of opportunities for him to murder the crap out of people. And Jinbei also, I feel like, you know, with, with his, um, you know, being on the Sun Pirates and everything, like, he wasn't as murder crazy as Arlong, but I still feel like every now and then, you know, Jinbei, boom, broke somebody's skull in half and just, oh, all right, well, sorry, man, and just moved on to the next guy, right? So that's the Straw Hats murder record. That wasn't the point of this video, but whatever. That's a tangent. That's what we do. The tangent, tangent, know me. And I probably still got that wrong. There's probably people in the comments that are like, oh no, teching. Sanji and Chopper have definitely murdered people, and here's why. And it's like, oh yeah, that's fair. So anyway, though. How much money do they have? Okay, so the Straw Hats, when they started out in the East, they were pretty broke, okay? Thank God that Usopp had a rich friend, and that was Kaya, because otherwise, I don't know if they would have gotten the Going Merry, okay? That's another thing in the live action where Nami just throws out there, like, yeah, we, obvi we obviously don't have any money, we have to just steal a ship, okay? So, thankfully, everything happened with, uh, you know, well, I guess not thankfully. Well, in a way, it's a good thing that... You know, Kuro was this evil pirate that tried to murder Kaya and take over the family fortune because if he didn't reveal himself, then the Straw Hats wouldn't have saved the day, and then Kaya wouldn't have been so grateful that she gave an entire ship to the Straw Hats. Okay, so they got the Mary there. I think it was also mentioned that Mary stocked the Going Mary completely with like food and provisions, so they were good for a while. Um, you know, so they go throughout most of the East Blue. Uh, at the end of Arlong Park, Nami, as she's giving her 
tearful goodbye to the people of Kokoyashi Village. She runs through the town and and everyone's like, oh no, D Nami, she's just so shy and she regrets everything that she's done. She doesn't want to say goodbye to all of us. And so she just runs right by everybody and jumps on the Mary. And that's when everyone realizes, wait, oh, Nami, we're going to miss you. Oh, wait a minute. Where'd my wallet go? Wait, wait, wait. Your wallet's gone too? Hey, my purse is gone. Wait a minute. Nami. And then Nami just like stole all their money and was like, bye. And I'm like, all right, that was, that was a good scene. Nami did just straight up rob an entire town though. That's skill. That's talent. Nami ran through an entire crowd of people and was able to like, that sleight of hand roll was a crit success. She got like a 32 on that damn thing, right? She was just <laughs> like, like wicked fast, faster than the speed of light. All right. So they, they had some spending money. Actually, I think she spent most of that money. Well, no, when they got to Logtown, she was like trying on all those different outfits and everything. And it's like, oh my God, marvelous young lady. Oh my God. It's, it's great. You look, you look stunning in that outfit. And then at the end, Nami's just like, yeah, I don't want any of this stuff. And then she just walks out. <laughs> all right. But you know, I, I'm, I, you know, there was also, uh, she loans Zoro some money so Zoro can go buy his new swords. I remember that. Although at the end of the day, I think Ipon Matsu gave him the swords for uh, free because of the skill that Zoro exhibited and everything like that. But they didn't really have that much money by the time they entered uh, the Grand Line, okay? There was the offer that Nami originally made to Igaram where it was like, hey, we'll save Vivi for you, but we want like a billion berries. Like she asked for a lot of money. And that's fair because Nami's like, wait a minute. Alabasta is like a major kingdom in the Grand Line and it's allied with the world government. It's been a kingdom that's been around for a long time. You know, it's the parallel is like ancient Egypt in our world. So Nami was like, well, you know, if we're going to help you, we want some money in return. And Igaram is like, well, how much do you want? And I think, I think Nami said a billion. I think she threw out like some absurd amount of money. And Igaram was like, that is a tremendous amount of money. I cannot guarantee that they will give you that much. But if you help Vivi, you will definitely be compensated for that. But you're asking for like... You're asking for, like, the GDP of, like, a nation in order for us to, in order for you to save Vivi and then get her back home. So I can't, I can't promise that, but I, you'll get something, all right? And then eventually, you know, the Straw Hats grow to like Vivi and they accept her as one of the crew. And then by the time we do finally get to Alabasta and Luffy defeats Crocodile and everything, I think the Straw Hats do get some stuff after that. But I don't, it's no billion berries or anything. It's nothing ridiculous. Also, Crocodile ravaged that land for a while. So they really needed, you know, the money there, whatever they had left in order to kind of rebuild everything like Yuba and all that stuff, right? And so Nami at that point, Nami is, listen, she's, she's greedy, sure, but she is aware of like, okay, my friends are worth more than money, okay? If it's a choice between a billion berries and the Straw Hat crew's lives... There might be a brief moment where Nami's like, huh, a billion bear. Okay, yeah, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick my friends' lives, obviously. You know, they might play it up for laughs for like a brief second, like a panel, like, hmm? Yeah, okay, but yeah, alright. She will always pick her friends above money. That is Nami's character, okay? The first time the Straw Hats acquire a lot of wealth is at the end of Skypea when they have the golden belfry there and then all the gold, you know, that was the whole reason, like the golden city that Nolan found, right? So after Luffy punches out Eneru and everything, they go inside of the snake and they get a bunch of the, the gold and they're like, we're rich, we're, we're, you know, we got all this gold now, it's fantastic, okay? And the funny thing with that is, yeah, they did acquire a lot of gold that was worth a lot of berry that we're going to get to when they go back down to Water 7 and they cash it all in. But the funniest thing was that the Skypeans were going to give them even more gold Gold because part of the like the uh, support for the golden belfry like snapped off it was like this giant pillar of gold and they were like oh we could just give that to our heroes that saved all of skypea yeah but it's not good to just give it to them like this let's wrap it up so they wrapped up this giant pillar of gold in like a cloth and they all lifted it up and they were carrying it to the straw it's like wait a second you forgot your prize you have something coming to you that we have to give right now and it's like wait a minute what is that thing and the straw hats interpreted it as like a cannon or something it's the secret skypean sky cannon oh we gotta run away right they thought it was going to be like a weapon they were using on them, right? So the Straw Hats ran away and they never got the gold. Now, you might say, oh, that was such a misunderstanding. They could have gotten so much money from that. 
I honestly don't know how they would have managed to haul a giant golden pillar on the Mary back down into the Blue Sea. I really don't see any way that they could have carried that thing around with them. It would have been worth several hundred, if not over a billion berries. Considering how much gold the Straw Hats acquired from Skypea, that was worth 300 million when they cashed it in at Water 7. Considering that was 300 million from the gold they acquired there, that giant golden pillar would have been worth, like, at least a Kaido. At least a Kaido! Give me that much, right? Like, four billion something, right? But there's just no way they could have hoisted that down, okay? Now, it's funny, because later on, that golden pillar actually does get referenced again. When Bellamy and his crew go up to the sky, uh, I, I guess, I, I don't know how that whole interaction went, like if Bellamy stole the golden pillar, or if it was like a thing where the Skypeans go up to Bellamy and they're like, oh, hey, you're, uh, you're, you're from the Blue Sea, aren't you? And he's like, yes, I'm Bellamy, the hyena. <laughs> That's great. Hey, um, do you guys know a, a pirate from the Blue Sea named uh, Luffy? I think his name was. He had like this straw hat. He saved us from Eneru. He was a really nice guy. And Bellamy's like, do I know Straw Hat Luffy? Are you asking me if I know Straw Hat Luffy? That son of a... Yeah, that's great. Anyway, we have this giant golden pillar that we wanted to give to them, but they left before we had a chance to. Can you take it to him? That son of a... Oh, yeah, he's my best friend. Love him. Love him. Me and Luffy, we go way back. I remember... I remember we were sitting in a bar one day, and Luffy turned to me and said, Bellamy, you're my best friend. And, uh, if I ever leave a bunch of gold behind, I want you to be the one to bring it to me. And, uh, Bellamy's like, yeah, that's, that was me. And he's like, oh, yeah, great. So, eventually, Bellamy ends up getting the gold, or he could have just stolen it from them. And, uh, he brings it back down to the, to the Blue Sea and actually gives it to, uh, Doflamingo. So, that was kind of how Bellamy got back into the good graces of Doflamingo by presenting him this giant raw amount of gold. Of course, Doflamingo was a piece of shit, so it doesn't matter whatever Bellamy did, you know, Doflamingo is still not going to look at him as like, he doesn't respect Bellamy. It doesn't matter how much gold, how much money Bellamy brings in, Doflamingo is still gonna view him as just a piece of trash on his shoe. Alright, and that was very clear there. You know, Bellamy and Doflamingo, that was a very toxic relationship. It, it really was. So, um, anyway, D Bellamy's doing better right now, by the way. He, he got away from Doflamingo. He, he makes flags now or something for a living. I don't know. Anyway, so... Strawheads get some gold, though. They bring it back down to Water 7. They cash it in. They get 300 million that they were going to use to repair the Going Merry. Of course, 200 million of that gets stolen by the Frankie family. The uh, Straw Hats have the epic, you know, the march on the Frankie house to get it back. Unfortunately, Frankie himself had already taken those 200 million on the sea train and he had purchased a bunch of Atom Wood. So the Straw Hats only had 100 million and they were going to use that to buy, like, a secondhand ship, but then everything happened with, like, you know, Usopp fighting Luffy over the Mary, and then Cypher Pole 9 got involved, you know, and then the whole thing with Eni's lobby occurred, and after everything was said and done, Frankie ended up becoming an ally to the Straw Hats, and he used the Atom Wood that he purchased with their money to build the Sunny, and I also imagine the remaining hundred million also went to building the Sunny as well, so, in a roundabout way, the money the Straw Hats got from the gold from Skypea did end up going to building the Sunny, okay, so that was their new ship, okay, but they spent probably most of the revenue on the Sunny itself, right, so they were kind of back down to not having a lot. Now, by the way, also, Nami keeps track of all the money on on the crew. You know, she doesn't really let anybody have it, okay? With the um with the One Piece D&D &D Marines, we have uh we have Bell, who's the finance crab, with the with the Devil's Luck Pirates, we had little Ricky, you know, he kept track of all the money. You know, everybody needs an accountant and Nami is the accountant, okay? Um so the next big amount of money they come into is actually shortly after Annie's Lobby Thriller Bark, after they defeat Moria. Well, Moria had this massive island ship, Thriller Bark, set up for 10 years, every marine and pirate and random merchant that got caught in the Florian Triangle ended up at Thriller Bark, got their shadows stolen by Moria, and they also got robbed blind by Moria as well. They took all their shit and then kicked them off of Thriller Bark, right, without their shadows, okay? So, Moria had this massive treasure vault on the island that the Straw Hats uh, looted after the fact, and so they defeated Moria, they grabbed all of his treasure, um, Captain John's treasure band was in there amongst some of the pieces, that's what Luffy ended up getting, but there was a bunch of treasure, and that treasure I think was estimated at somewhere around 200 million. 
because that comes up later in Sabaody in the following arc when Kami gets captured and put uh, up for auction at the auction house. And it was like, okay, well, it, you know, the Celestial Dragons are here and the Marines are here and there's some other, other really strong pirates. Instead of just going in and busting up the place and cutting everybody down to get Kami back, why don't we just buy her back? I mean, it's messed up to say, but if we have the money and it's an easy way to do it, why don't we just do that, right? And Nami is like, you know, we have like 200 million berries that we got from uh, Thriller Bark. So, you know, we'll definitely be able to buy her back. And of course, uh, unfortunately, Charlos was there. So as soon as Kami's up, he's like, oh, this is a marvelous mermaid from Fishman Island. Starting bid is 500 million. No! I want 500 million. I want the mermaid. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, there you go. And so just an absurd amount of money that the celestial dragons have like 500 million. They could just toss that around all day, you know? And so Nami was like, oh my God, that's so much money. Right? So they still had the money. They didn't spend the money on anything. So they had the 200 million from uh, thriller bark. And I guess, I mean, Nami doesn't have magic pockets. She can't keep, okay. She can keep a lot of stuff in her cleavage, but she can't keep 200 million. It's not like a safe deposit box. Okay. So I'm, saying the 200 million that was the treasure from Thriller Bark probably remained on the sunny for the two years that the Straw Hats were scattered by Kuma. So Kuma, you know, not only was he protecting their ship, he was also protecting Nami's money. So that means that when Kuma finally arrives at Egghead, Nami will thank him. <laughs> Nami will just go right up to Kuma to the PX0 and be like, I know your memories were wiped and you're not the person you used to be. But I must thank you. You have earned Nami's highest respect for not only protecting her crew and the ship, but also protecting her money. <laughs> So, Nami will give a, a, a deepest bow to Kuma there, okay? So, uh, Kuma, I guess, yeah, protected the Sunny there. Uh, uh, Hachi and uh, the Rosy Life Riders helped out, too. I don't want to say Duval did nothing. You know, he did. Um, well, anyway, so after the time skip, you know, how much money do the Straw Hats have, like, right now, you know? Because 200 million, that'll last in terms, well... Okay, I was gonna say that'll that'll cover provisions because like two hundred million doll, two hundred million berry in the One Piece world is like over a million in our world. Okay, so having like over a million dollars going around to spend on like basic provisions like food and things, it's like that would normally cover you for a while, but like. Luffy's on board, and, you know, so are the, uh, like, Zoro's booze budget, that's through the roof, you, you know what I mean? Sanji only wants the finest ingredients, you know, when he's cooking. Chopper needs medical supplies, you know, Robin needs her books, you know, you know, Frankie has all of his, you know, engineer Frankie and Usopp need m materials in order to work on and stuff like that, so, you know, that, that 200 million might not last as long as you might think, right? Now, when they got to Fishman Island, they were offered a bunch of treasure by Neptune. And in fact, Neptune basically was like, yeah, I mean, I mean, I can't give you the Tamete Bako, uh, you know, because that's something that's kind of ours. But other than that, you can go ahead and have pretty much anything you want from the vault. You save the entire island from being destroyed by the Noah. So that's like the least I can do, right? So they go down there to go get all the treasure. Unfortunately, they give the treasure over to, I think they did steal the Tamete Bako as well, because that is how, um, th that's how Big Mom got her hands on it, right? So they hand all the money over to Peckoms and Tamago, uh, in order to kind of like compensate for their losses. Okay, so Nami uh, was unfortunately, I mean, understandably very upset because Luffy just gave away all the treasure to Big Mom. Um, because Luffy, Luffy at the end of the day is here to have a big adventure. He's not really here to like, you know, get the gold. I mean, that could be part of it, but the overall idea is the, is the adventure. Okay, so they gave over all the treasure to Big Mom. And after that, I don't know if there's ever been a moment where they've gotten a lot of money. Uh, Punk Hazard, I would say, like, they stole money from Caesar at the end of Punk Hazard, but also remember, Caesar was getting a bunch of money from Big Mom, and then he was blowing it on booze and, like, you know, you know, like a cabaret service. You know, having, like, a cabaret ship coming to Punk Hazard and, like, hanging out with a bunch of beautiful ladies every Friday night. That was what Caesar was blowing his money on. So, maybe Caesar didn't have a lot of money after the events of Punk Hazard, so they didn't have a lot of stuff to steal from him. Also, much of the lab was destroyed by the end of that arc. Um, then, they, after that, they go to Dress Rosa. I don't know if they got a lot of money after the events of that arc, because the island was pretty much ravaged and destroyed. And yeah, Doflamingo would have had a lot of money in his coffers. And so maybe they could have given some, like, Riku Dold the Third could have been like, all right, well, I'm the king again. I got to give you something. Maybe they got some money from that. But, like, that island was really damaged from the birdcage. And I, I can imagine, like, we need a lot of this money to repair all the damage that Doflamingo wrought on this country. So 
maybe that maybe King Riku gave the Straw Hats something for their efforts, but like nothing like absurd, nothing like a billion berries or something like that, right? Um, so after that was Zoe. They didn't get really any money on Zoe. I wonder what the currency on Zoe was. Um, thinking acorns. Acorns was the currency. Um, and so then after that, they go to Whole Cake Island. They did steal the Poneglyphs, uh, from Big Mom's treasure vault, but they didn't really have time or the space to really steal anything else. You know what I mean? They were in Big Mom's treasure vault's area, but Brooke barely was able to get a uh, get out with his life and just the Poneglyph etchings in his head. So he didn't really have time to grab a bunch of gold or resources or anything like that. So they got off the island. They had to kind of book it out of there. Um, maybe Nami grabbed some. Seems like, I always assume, like, wherever Nami's going, Nami's always, like, pickpocketing people, sleight of hand, stealing some money. But, like, at the end of the day, that's nothing, like, absurdly, you know? Like, not a lot of money, like, like hundreds of millions of berries or anything like that. But she's always kind of, like, robbing people around her at all times, you know? It's, like, kind of like Nami's default, right? So, after Whole Cake, they go to, um, you know, Wano. And once again, after the events of all that, like, a lot of the money and resources that were hoarded by Orochi, I mean, there was so much poverty and suffering in the rest of Wano outside of the flower capital. I don't really think that the Straw Hats would have been like, give us all your money from the treasure vault, Momo. <laughs> you know, it's like, guys, we really need this money that Orochi had been hoarding and Kaido had been hoarding. Oh, he was a dragon on his treasure. Yeah, he was like, we really need that money to repair Wano. I mean, Wano is in a really sorry state right now. We really need that money. Once again, maybe they gave him some stuff, but not that much, you know, and I don't think the Straw Hats would have asked for it as well, right? So, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's where we're at right now in the story. It's interesting because Oda really only has the Straw Hats get a lot of money when it's, like, relevant to the plot. Like, it was relevant for them to get the gold from Skypea so they could get a new ship at Water 7. It was relevant for them to get all the gold from Moria's treasure vault when they needed it to uh, buy back Kami at the auction house at Sab Odi. You know what I mean? But the Straw Hats, at this point, they're Yonko. They don't really need, like, an excessive amount of money. Like, what do the Straw Hats really need? I mean, I guess, they, yeah, money for meat and supplies to repair the ship and everything like that. But a lot of times, honestly... I could see it more like that in Wano. Like, instead of giving the Straw Hats, like, gold, it'd be like, we could give you some supplies. We can give you stuff to repair your ship and, you know, food and provisions and things like that. But uh, in terms of, like, raw revenue, and also the revenue, the, the money at Wano was different than the money. It's not berries. It was just gold. It was, like, piles of gold because that's what they did back in, like, the Edo period of Japan. Like, a certain amount, like, a weight of gold would be worth X amount, you know, stuff like that. But it was still gold, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure it would have been cashed in. But, like, the uh, we're at, we're, we're at right now in the story I don't know if like the Straw Hats needing money to purchase something is going to be really relevant now with that being said I still do believe that when the Straw Hats do reach Laugh Tale and they find the One Piece, part of the One Piece, not all of the One Piece, but part of the One Piece, in fact, the most insignificant part of the One Piece, is going to be a mountain of treasure. It's going to be a mountain of gold and diamonds and rubies and sapphires and uh, pieces of eight and all that kind of jazz. And that's going to basically be like all the treasure that Roger had accrued and he just dumped it on Laugh Tale and be like, Yarg mateys, if someone comes here and finds the One Piece, they'll also find a mountain of treasure. That's how it goes, right? And so I, I swear on me mustache, you know, and so they left that way. They also might also find that giant egg from, um, you know, Roger's ship. The Oro Jackson might just actually be at Laugh Tale. No, they used it to leave. So I guess it wouldn't be on Laugh Tale. But maybe somebody, maybe somebody, who was the last person that had the Oro Jackson? They all, like the crew disbanded and everybody jumped off at different times. But somebody had to be the last person to sail the Oro Jackson. And maybe it was Gabon. Maybe he has, you know, possession of it. Who knows? But yeah, I do believe they're going to walk into the treasure vault area in, in Laugh Tale. They're going to see a mountain of gold and diamonds and precious gems. And Nami's going to be like, ah! And she's going to like Scrooge McDuck her way and just be like swimming in the gold. But then there's going to be like other really important stuff like Void Century stuff, Joy Boy related things. Maybe the origin of Devil Fruits. You know, all, all this kind of stuff is going to be there as well. Um, but there is also going to be gold. You know, just for their tre uh, tr troubles. Here's just more billions and billions of berries, more than you could ever spend in a lifetime unless you're Nami and then Nami took that personally all right well anyway uh, that's the video just wanted to do a quick little video on that because it was just a little idea that I had uh, popping in my head recently like how much money do the strides actually have you know interesting one so anyway yeah thanks for watching the video everybody hope you continue to have a very warm cozy December day wherever you are in the world this will be teching signing out later everyone